Oh, hear it? So sweet. Mmm. Hey guys, welcome back to Ivy's Notebook for more fun food and travel adventures. My name is Ivy and in this episode, I will be bringing you on tour to Mount Fujiyama with some strawberry picking experience and many, many delicious food. If you like what you see, then keep on watching. This video is not sponsored. Just so you know, we chose this Mount Fuji tour from the company called Klook. So this is a snapshot of our itinerary. If you like more info about the places we stopped by, I'll link it down below. At the beginning of this bus tour, we stopped by at a highway rest stop for a visit. If you ever got a chance to visit Japan's rest stop, I highly, highly recommend that you go check it out. Japan's rest stop are clean, organized, and there are just so, so many food and things to see. Japan's rest stop is also a great place to buy souvenirs. But since we're still at the beginning of our journey, we won't be stopping for souvenirs. We went and visit this bakery instead for breakfast. Now there are usually loads of variety at the bakery, but I highly recommend that you try the fried curry pan, especially if they are freshly fried from the kitchen. They are to die for. Mmm, looks delicious. Now let's get back up on the bus to eat our breakfast pan. How many have custard? Custard and red bean. That's why Yan has some. So this is the infamous curry pan. I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite breads in Japan. It's deep fried with flour so that it's crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. And the best part about this pan is that there is a whole egg inside it with a runny yolk which will increase the curry texture when you bite in together with the bread. OMG, it's so delicious! Mmm, that's delicious! water break. Always drink extra water when you're on vacay. Finally, we arrived at Ichigo Farm and we have such a lovely weather to go strawberry picking today. So if you're on tour with your family, it's definitely a fun activity to go for. So they allow you to pick and eat as much as you want, but the only thing that you cannot do is to take away. We were only allowed to pick out strawberries from the selected rows, because other rows of strawberry are for retail. But don't worry about not having enough strawberries. I can guarantee you that there is so much strawberry that you'll be stuffing yourself full with it. Oh, kid, so sweet. Mmm, very sweet. Nice. They even have sauces for you to dip together with your strawberry. I mean, what a way to make your experience special. Definitely go for the chocolate. Okay, this is condensed milk, but I don't really like it because the strawberry was sweet enough 
and the condensed milk just made it even more sweet. Mm. If it's sour, it's okay, but it's too sweet like that. Oh, it's so sweet. All the strawberries, you can eat. And guys, if you like what I've shared so far, do remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you still want to taste their strawberry after you leave, you can always buy boxes of fresh strawberry after. They have other fresh fruits available as well as freshly made jams. You can also go to their souvenir shop and buy their really cute fruits anime character keychains. Now we head off to visit Kawaguchiko Lakeside Park. It's one of the most popular sites to view Mount Fuji. You can take amazing pictures there. The only sad thing is that we came during winter and I googled online before and saw that if it was spring, the whole place would be covered with flower fields. But nevertheless, it's still an awesome place to look at Mount Fuji. Wait, my gang is eating something again. These people never feel full. They're trying out the soft cream. Let's go see how it tastes like. Immediately after that, we went on to have lunch at this place called Kawaguchi Lakeside Restaurant to enjoy their famous udon noodles of Yamanishi Prefecture. Hi. Okay, the lunch looks awesome and the view looks amazing. Here we have some bean sprout a bowl of fragrant rice, fried karage chicken, and the very famous udon noodles. Okay, let's start taste testing, starting with the noodles. The noodles look really thick and there is ample of meat and vegetables in there as well. Oh, 
是五个。This is wasabi furikake. Furikake is a seasoning that you put on rice. I love Japanese seasoning because it makes rice even more delicious, just like butter to bread. But don't put too much in case some of you can't handle the wasabi taste. After you pour in some furikake, mix it well and have a bite. Mm. Wow! The flavor is so powerful. <laughs> this really is a great place to have a meal and because it's winter the food really warms us up. After lunch, we walk next door and ride on Mount Fuji Panoramic Roadway to enjoy 360 degree view of Lake Kawaguchi and Mount Fuji. The tour guide said that Kimi no Nawa's drawing was inspired by this scenery. And yes, it looks almost like it. The view is very breathtaking. You all really have to come here and have a look yourself. I promise you, you won't regret it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We went to Mount Fuji first station to take a closer look at Mount Fuji. We are supposed to go to the fifth station which is supposed to be higher up, but the guide said that the road was covered in snow, so the bus couldn't go any further. I came here before during early spring and I only made it to the fourth station because of the snow as well. So if you really want to go higher, please visit during summer or autumn. After all that, the tour ended and the bus dropped us at Shinjuku bus station. So we went to dinner at this place called Musashi Ramen. It's just a short walk away from the station and the raining was pretty good. So we went and gave it a try. Now this place, like most ramen shop, is a very small place. It can only fit maximum, I think, 10 to 15 people at a time. So if you're with a big group, I don't recommend that you come in here unless you're willing to sit separately. And if you go into a ramen shop, always remember that it is one ramen order per person. You cannot share a bowl of ramen because there is a limited space as they want to cater to as many people as possible. There are lots of condiments as usual. So this is vinegar and this one would be um, chili paste. And if you need more soup, they also have a jar of hot soup ready in case if you need more soup in your ramen. Oh, and they also have a paper napkin which you can tear out from a tissue box, which is pretty cool. Okay. 
Okay, without further ado, time to eat. Oh my god, this looks so awesome. And the soup so clear and you know that that's very thick broth. Oh my god. The noodles, I'm telling you, while editing this video, I can still remember the noodles. It's like so super chewy and like it's fresh made noodles. Oh my god, me slurping, damn it. Oh shit. And seriously, you look at that. Seriously, look at that. That pork char siu slice. It's so thick. And I tell you, it's so tender. It's like really, really tender. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I'm still watching myself eating this and not having it at the same time. Oh my goodness, guys. You have to try it. Oh yeah. And the egg. I tell you, the egg is one of my favorite parts of eating the ramen because the egg can be so nice and runny, made to perfection every single time, seriously. Oh my goodness. Personally, I think no ramen is perfect without the egg, like seriously. <laughs> Hereby, swear to God that this is delicious. Mm, come okay, that's it for this week's travel episode. If you like what I've shared, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like more videos like this. And I'll see you next time.